question. Hi, I'm Jacob. And I'm Greg, and we're the regular host of the Virtual Bible Study, a weekly Bible study program conducted exclusively over the Internet. We deal with a wide variety of Bible subjects, and we invite listener participation in all of our discussions. And you can hear the program live every Thursday night at 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central Time, if you'll go to our website, thevirtualbiblestudy.com. Follow the link there, and you can hear the program. We stream the program live with audio and video, and you can also catch our program on podcasting. Uh, you can find out more information there on our website. We take questions from our listeners, and they sometimes prompt the subject that we study uh, on our weekly program. And one of the questions that is asked and has been discussed is what about going to the prom? Can a Christian or someone who wants to be pleasing to God go to the prom and dance? That's the question. I like the way that you posed it, Jacob. The question is, can a person who's really concerned about what God thinks go to the prom? If, you're not, if you don't care what God thinks, then you're going to do whatever you want to do about any subject. But if you care what God thinks, then you've got to look to the Bible and find out what he authorizes. You can do anything and everything that you want, but if you want to be pleasing to God, you're going to live your life as he has prescribed in the Scriptures. Exactly right. Now, on this question of going to the prom, or really what we're talking about here, Jacob, is the broader question is of dancing. What does the Bible say about dancing? And the problem is just a dance. It's it's the the dance of the year. At most schools, it is it's the the social function of the year. But the question we've got to answer is, what does the Bible say about the prom? Uh, and what does in more general way, what does it say about dancing? So. Uh, Jacob, show me the verse in the Bible where it says, Thou shalt not dance. You know, people look for that, and people can't find it because it's not in there. Yeah, and I've had people say that. When we, when the question of dancing comes up, they people say, Well, show me in the Bible where it says, Thou shalt not dance. And we would answer just right up front, It doesn't say that anywhere. There's no place in the Bible where we can point you to a verse and say, Thou shalt not dance, thou shalt not go to the prom. You know, the Bible doesn't say you shouldn't commit credit card fraud either. Yeah. You can't find anything about credit card fraud. The, the Bible doesn't say that's, that you can't go out and steal a car. It says okay. you can't steal, but it doesn't say you can't steal a car. But, I mean, what we do is we take moral principles taught in the Bible and we apply them specifically. To our current uh, situation. Exactly right. So what we need to understand is that the Bible teaches that dancing is lasciviousness. Now, lasciviousness. Well, that's a $5 word. Yeah, well, that's a Bible word, and it's a word that we never use in normal conversation but it is an important word that we need to understand because I want you to notice in Galatians chapter 5, beginning verse 19, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, and it goes on to mention several other, including drunkenness and so forth. And it says, of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So lasciviousness is a sin that will keep us from going to heaven. Now, we need to know what that word means. And uh, uh, let me reference a few uh, experts on Bible words and terminology. One says that lascivious denotes excess, licentiousness, absence of restraint, indecency, wantonness, shameless outrages on public decency. I don't know if that helps too much. But here's one from a pretty well-known Bible scholar named Thayer who says that uh, lasciviousness is wanton acts or manners, indecent bodily movements, unchaste handling of males and females. I think that last phrase there fits n almost exactly with what modern dancing is, indecent bodily movements and unchaste handling of males and females. Webster says, just a Webster dictionary definition of lasciviousness says, that which tends to produce lewd emotions. That's pretty clear. All right, and the argument has been made, and I think it is very valid. Uh, if you were to turn off the music, would a man and a woman who are not married feel comfortable doing the things that they're doing while the music is playing? In other words, does the music make those kind of movements and that kind of bodily contact? Is that what makes it okay? Most people would say it would be embarrassing and wrong for people, unmarried people to, to be involved in those ways if there was no music playing, yeah. but somehow the music is supposed to make it okay. It's lasciviousness. It produces uh, uh, lust and lewd emotions uh, in those who participate. It's lasciviousness, and it has to be avoided. So when somebody says, where does the Bible say I can't dance? Where does the Bible say I can't go to the prom? Well, we would say it says it in places that condemn lasciviousness, like Galatians chapter 5 there, beginning at verse 19, that lists the 
works of the flesh. First Peter chapter 4, verses 3 and 4 is another passage that uses the same word and tells us that uh, we've done that in the past, but we, if we're going to be pleasing to God, we need to cut that out in the future. First Peter chapter 4, beginning verse 3, For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excessive wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange you run not with them to the same excessive riot, speaking evil of you. There is a, there are two words there, Dad, that really are pertinent to this discussion, lasciviousness and lust. Those things were how we lived at, before we were Christians, but now that we're trying to live for God and how he wants us to live, those things cannot be a part of our life. Well, someone might say that the prom in particular is a special thing. It's a once-in-a-lifetime. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for a young person. Maybe... It'd be okay to make a special exception for the prom since it's just it only happens once in a person's life, and maybe we should just take the opportunity to do that since you don't have that. I tell you what, I think that that probably is true. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity, but for those who are interested in pleasing God, think of it this way: it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to take a stand for what's right, to stand up and 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 do a a, a, a right thing and set a proper example. It is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You're going to fail the test or pass it. I think that's a good way to look at it. There's some passages that tell us when it comes to being tempted and, and going to dances, including the prom, just going to put us in a strong place of temptation. We're supposed to flee from temptation. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, it says, Flee also, you for lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. We're supposed to flee flee from things that would cause us to have feelings of lust in our heart. Going to a dance, instead of fleeing from it, is actually running toward it. And you're just putting yourself in a place of temptation. We understand the terminology flee when it comes to physical dangers. When there are physical dangers around, we get as far away from them as possible. In spiritual matters, we need to do the same. And I think it's especially important for young people as they're tempted with those thoughts and those desires to flee from them, as the instruction to Timothy there in 2 Timothy chapter 2. One of our regular listeners to the virtual Bible study is Don in Antioch, Tennessee, and he writes concerning going to dances and going to the prom. He says, no, Christians ought not to go because they are to be modest in their talk, actions, how they dress, and they should avoid the appearance of evil. There he, there he's alluding to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, which says, abstain from all appearance of evil. We're supposed to let our light shine, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. In other words, set a good example. And those would be additional reasons why that a person interested in pleasing God should not go to the dance, should not go to the prom or any other dance. And I, I believe that's a clear Bible answer to that question. Well, that is what we look for on the virtual Bible study. We want to go to God's Word and find out what He teaches there for us so that we can live a life that's pleasing to Him. Because we know that we can't make up the way of ourselves. We know that we need help from above. We need guidance from our Creator. And so every week on the Virtual Bible Study, we look to the pages of God's Word to find out His instructions for us, and we try to apply them to our lives. And we invite you to listen to the Virtual Bible Study every Thursday night on the Internet at 9 p.m. Central Time, 8 o'clock, excuse me, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Central Time. And the address again is thevirtualbiblestudy.com.